Hey guys, good evening. First, I want to apologize. So I am about seven minutes behind uh, time. I got ready to come on and realized that my laptop wasn't charging at all. So I'm here. Luckily, I made it before the 10 minute mark uh, because with this particular platform, if you live in 10, 10 minutes, you, you don't make the broadcast. So good evening, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. This evening, we're talking about the fact that your business has a soul. Your business has a soul. Did you know that your, your business has a soul? I remember in my first business, which was a brick and mortar business, when we began to transition and offer more services, I remember changing the tagline to my business and it was something along the lines of, you know, for your body, soul, and mind or something. I can't remember fully, but if I'm not mistaken, the word soul was in it. I was thinking about that earlier today when I was preparing to come on and I said, I really didn't understand what soul meant at that time, you know? It definitely worked because we had a very relaxed atmosphere, um, in that environment. So, you know, the word worked uh, well for us, or maybe it was just what we had going on. But I realized today that I didn't fully understand, you know, even what the word soul meant at that time. And it was during my relationship with God, me getting closer uh, to him and just reading the word and studying and understanding more about what our walk really is what salvation really meant and the transformation that is occurring, um, that's when I really understood what the soul is. So your soul is your mind. This thing right here has a lot to do with your money and everything else you set out to do, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And oftentimes when we get saved, um, we're often thinking we need to have our spirit fed but we know that God's spirit is perfect and it's now on the inside of us. And so that's not really what's transpiring. What's transpiring is an attempt for our soul to get an alignment with the spirit of God that now resides inside of us. So to break that down, it is an attempt for our mind, our will, our emotions to get an alignment with, with God. And so when I think about the spirit, you know, we are spirit inside a body with a soul, right? And when you think about your business, you can think about the fact that your business being a spirit inside a body with a soul. So the spirit of your vision of your business will be your vision, right? It's that thing that you are striving for, you're striving to achieve, no different from, you know, salvation. And that vision most oftentimes is this perfect dream or goal that you have on the inside of you of how you want your business to grow, how you want your life to expand because your business is growing. So when we think about the spirit of your business, you can think about it in respects of the vision that you have for your business. It's one of the reasons why I am always encouraging people, especially entrepreneurs, but even those of you who, um, you know, work. Uh, in corporate America, but to have a, a vision for your life and, and your business. And the body of your business would be the systems, the foundations, you know, how you do the things um, that you do. And then your soul would be intertwined in your brand. So let me do a quick introduction. I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry, the growth strategist, business coach, and mentor to women in business just like you, helping them to brand build and profit, not only in their business, but also in their life, helping them to build businesses that fund their lifestyle and not run their lifestyle. And what we talk about on today is going to be in alignment with, with all of that. So remember I said your business, also let's think about it as if it has a spirit, a body, and a soul. And the spirit would be the vision. That's the thing you're going to be striving for to get everything else in alignment, just like you do with salvation, with the spirit of your vision, um, of your business, which would be your vision. 
And then the body would be the systems, the foundations, you know, how you make the thing do what it does. And then your the soul of your business would be intertwined in um, what I teach, the aspects that I teach of, of branding. One of the things I know to be true is <clears throat> my business has a way of telling me something isn't right. I remember when I was, um, I've been in one particular industry for maybe about 15 to 17 years when I started getting this nudge and this urge to do something different. I just didn't know what it was. But I just knew that although things were going well in my business, something was off. Like there was this pull for something different. And I believe our business begins to talk to us, right? It begins to say, you know, I don't want to operate like this anymore. I don't want to do it this way anymore. And I just thought of this scripture that says, when the book is dry, the raven, or the raven no longer feeds you, right? Something like that as far as scripture is concerned. Um, and, and it seems like the things in our business start to kind of dry up, no matter how much effort or energy we put into it, um, something just feels off. It just doesn't feel the same. And I believe that's the soul of our business calling us to um, new endeavors, causing, calling us to transformation within our lives. When we think about our business, um, we're in a relationship with our business, guys, whether you know it or not. We're in a relationship with our business. It's like a partnership. And I have something that I want you all to do in our, our broadcast this evening, and I'll share that um, in just a moment. Well, no, let's, let's, I'll let you guys think about it as we progress forward um, in the broadcast. Imagine, okay, so let's think about a relationship. I'm getting my thoughts together so everything is in alignment because that's actually what we're talking about. Imagine, so think about a relationship. So you're in a relationship and things are a little rocky, right? However, you, you know it and your partner knows it, but you guys have just kind of been teeter-tottering around it you really haven't addressed it. Nobody has really sat down and talked about it. And then there comes a point where you have, there's no choice. You have to have the conversation. So let's imagine that person that you were having the issues with, that you were in a relationship with, is actually your business. And let's think about how that conversation would go. So what is it that you would be saying to your business, right? When you sit down to the table to talk about what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you'd like to see different, what you'd like to see change, what would that conversation be like? And then I want you to think about what would your business say to you? So if you had to sit down at the table with your business, right, because you are in a relationship with your business, it is a partnership that you're doing here. What would your business be telling you in this season? Would your business be saying, I'm exhausted? I no longer want to operate like this. I ain't feeling this anymore. I want to do something different. Something has to change. Or would your business be saying, oh, I think we're doing amazing. We should do more of this or more of that. What would that conversation be like with, with your business? And I, again, your business has a soul, has mind, a will, and emotion. Let's think about some uh, characters that would be familiar to you. I was thinking about, I don't know, I miss Piggy <laughs> from the Muppets came to mind. If you think about Miss Piggy and you had to say, what type of soul does Miss Piggy have? You probably could um, express that, right? If you had to say, um, and I don't know why I went back to all this childhood stuff in my thoughts and my thinking, probably because I don't watch a whole lot of TV, right? But if you had to think about um, how many of you remember Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? So if you thought about this, if you had to describe the soul of Mr. Rogers, what would that be? Or, you know, okay, this is one that's probably more recent. I'm terrible with movies. I don't watch TV movies, all that stuff. Just very periodically. So Wakanda, right? 
Um, no, it wasn't even Wakanda. It was Black Panther. But you all know what I'm talking about. What do you feel the soul of Black Panther, the movie, was? And just like you can identify, you can do Chick-fil-A, you can do Macy, Tiffany. They all have a soul, right? And we're talking about branding. So that is the feeling and the emotion that you get. Because whatever your mind, your will, and your emotions are feeling, right? That is what you're expressing, even in your business. And if you sat down to have that conversation with your business, what would your business be saying to you? Would your business be saying, oh, we're doing an amazing job, or I don't want to operate like this anymore. I'm exhausted. I cannot sustain um, this way anymore. Would your business be inviting you into a new realm or a new measure of growth? Um, for not only your business, but also for your life. I believe that entrepreneurship is one of the, um, if you ever want to know more about who you are, become an entrepreneur. Because everything that we have shows up in our entrepreneurial journey, everything, our soul, our mind shows up, our will shows up, and our emotions show up. And I can remember when I was you know, at a point where I just no longer wanted to do what I was doing anymore. And it was eating at me. Like I, I let that thing sit and rest. <laughs> um, feisty, a bold, assertive, absolutely right. That's not her soul, her mind, her will, and her emotions. But I remember feeling like I don't know exactly what it is that I'm going to do next when I first started getting that feeling, but I don't want to do this anymore. And my business was telling me the same thing. My business was saying, it was mirroring back to me what my soul was saying. And what I find that's happening for many people is they never fully embody the soul of their business. So in entrepreneurship, you guys will hear me talk about the C stage, the growth stage, and the stage of expansion, right? And in that C stage, we oftentimes are doing like this cookie cutter thing. Like um, we may have all of these emails that we've downloaded from influencers that give you a PDF to this or a checklist to that. And, you know, just all the things, right? Um, we may have all of those things in the beginning because we're just really trying to figure this thing out. And oftentimes we build like this robotic type business. And this is one of the reasons why the market seems even more saturated than what it is, because there's so much um, um, uncertainty in the early stages of your business building process. But there's a space and a time if you really get in alignment with what your business is calling you to do, right? And sometimes that call guys, isn't always a pleasant call. Sometimes there's a disruption or an interruption that transpires because your business is like, okay, I've been asking you to do this for a long time. I've been calling you over here. I've been calling you up here. I've been calling you to go deeper for a long time and you didn't hear me, right? And so sometimes the call to, or the pull to do something different becomes disruptive because we aren't paying attention. Our business wants to evolve. Anything in our creation that God has created or he's given us the ability, authority, or power to create, it wants to grow. It wants to evolve. And so what is your business saying to you? And when we get out of that C stage of, um, you know, we're just trying to figure it out where we haven't really put the essence of who we are into our business. It's the reason why many people won't show up in their business because they're attempting to do maybe this cookie cutter way. It's un totally understandable in those beginning stages. But when you really, for those of you who really want to build a brand, which is something that's um, long-term, has longevity to it and sustainability, you get into the space where you're embodying what it is that you're building. As you're evolving, your business is evolving with you as well. And your business will talk to you guys. I'm telling you, it has a soul, has a mind, a will, and, a, and emotions, and it wants to grow. It wants to continue growing, and it's speaking to you all the time. So I just want to propose this to you all this evening. 
to sit down and imagine the conversation that your business would be having with you, right? Because you are in a relationship with your business, whether you know it or not, right? Relationship, partnership, and with any relationship or any partnership, there has to be compromise. There has to be some type of growth. No one wants to be in anything that's stagnant. And your business will begin to talk to you, right? Whether you're listening or not. So what would that conversation be like if your business came to you and said, hey, we need to talk? We need to talk. What are some things that your business would be saying to you when you guys sit down at the table to talk about how everything is going down? What would your business be saying to you? That's the soul of your business. And everything that we do in the marketplace as we're evolving and growing, the soul of our business is growing with us. Hopefully, it should be. And sometimes if it's not, it's out of alignment and things kind of go left. But when you really start embodying um, the, the transformation that your business wants to make, I just believe our business wants to make the transformation with us because we are our business, right? We're a huge part of uh, our business growth um, and, and how our brand um, expounds and expands in the marketplace. And so what does that look like for you? If you were having that conversation with your business, what would your business be saying to you in the season? I believe that entrepreneurship is just a really, really beautiful thing. And for those of you who are um, believers, there's a scripture that says do business, you know, until I come. Many of the people who obtain measures of wealth uh, from a biblical standpoint had some type of entrepreneurship. They were using principles um, and um, what would be the word for it? Um, strategies for entrepreneurship. I love one particular one is Leviticus. It may be 22, 23, right? Where God is talking to the farmer. He's leaving directions and instructions for the farmer who is an, an entrepreneur about his land and how he's leaving Tim, you know, the outside portion of it the poor and then the rest he takes to market. So I see entrepreneurship when I read um, scripture. But there's so many instances of entrepreneurship or people doing entrepreneurial things biblically uh, in the Bible, guys. And so when we set out to, to do our business, um, one of the things we have to understand is that in order for our business to grow, we have to grow with our business. So our mind, our will, and our emotions have to be in alignment with what our business wants to do. Statues, that's a good word, right? That's a great word, uh, Andrea. Our mind, our will, and our emotions. I remember when things were, it was trouble in paradise in my home. I was married for 14 years, dysfunctional, um, and I've been divorced now for about three. And I remember when things were like super rocky because my business would speak to me in the same manner. Like there was always something. I was um, showing up late and late is it's just not part of my nature or my character. I was forgetting to order things. I was um, exhausted um, because so much of my personal life was dysfunctional. It was just spilling over into the business. I can even remember a few times that I spoke about um, my struggles with, you know, people coming in the business, which is like, why, why are we doing that, <laughs> right? Why are we doing that? But it's at the point where our business is requiring that we go to a new level in our personal life as well. And so your business has a soul. And when you get to the space in entrepreneurship where you're no longer doing the cookie cutter thing um, and you embody the essence of, of your business, the, the soul of your business, it doesn't mean that you don't follow strategy. It doesn't mean that you don't listen to advice, but there's a flow. There's an alignment that starts to happen um, within your business building process, within the content that you create the conversations that you have on your lives, it's the more authentic thing that's transpiring instead of let me try to do it like this, right? 
I just believe that, you know, we have everything we need on the inside of us. And God gives us guides and guidance um, in order to make it happen, um, in order to bring some of those things to surface, those desires, those thoughts, those gifts, those talents that are in the inside. I believe there are people he set in place to help us cultivate those things. So many of us are, are out of touch with the soul of our business. I, I blame a lot of it on the time we spend on social media, which is an amazing thing when we are centered, right? When we are in alignment. But, you know, I think just like we are looking for wholeness, I think our business is looking for wholeness too. And so what is it in this season that is going to bring a level of wholeness to your business for the season that you're in? Last thing, I'll repeat this. This is my um, assignment for you all this evening. To imagine <clears throat> you're having a conversation with your business. What would your business want to share with you when you guys sit down to the table? I know I should not be doing anything except teaching. Wow. Wow. Now, I see one um, where you said you quit every morning. What is it that you quit, Andrea? Tell me what it is that you quit every morning. I believe I was kind of speaking at that time. I don't remember what I was talking about or what that related to. What is it that you quit every morning? Andrea says, I know I should be, I should not be doing anything except teaching, right? So, if you were sitting down and having a conversation with your business, would your business say, look, all of this other stuff, I don't want to do that no more. I'm not going to support you in that anymore. I'm not going to help you in that anymore because we need to be teaching. Is, is that the conversation that you think your business will be having with you in this season? And so, guys, what is it about the call to pull the tub? For us to do things differently in our business, that why why do we ignore that? Right? Do you think it's because there has been um, so many examples of how it should be, um, and what you feel called or led to do in this season may not be popular? Um, it may not be the traditional thing to do. Um, the servicing side of Cosmos. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. You know, I, I know it's, um, when you've been doing something for a long time and it sustains you, um, it, it becomes like this hustle, like, well, oh, I know I can do that and get money because that is working. But there is, I think for me, this is just me personally, when I was fighting transitioning from owning a brick and mortar service-based business, to now coaching and consulting, you know, full time from home when I was kind of like finding that because it was it was new, right? It was um, it, it wasn't even something that I knew anything about. Like it was a download I got, right? But I remember <clears throat> feeling like, although I'm not exactly sure, <laughs> excuse me, uh, what this next thing looks like. My soul won't allow me to do that other thing anymore. And if I don't go ahead and begin um, putting some seeds in the ground for the next round or the next thing that I want to do, I just, I, this is me personally, I felt that thing would just crash and burn because my, my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions, it just wasn't there anymore. I I felt it dwindling away, but it was actually a call to step into a new, higher, bigger version of myself. That, that's all it was. I believe that that's the same call that's happening um, for you all. I was thinking today about, um, it, because I've been getting several uh, people who work in corporate America who are wanting to monetize their expertise come to me for coaching and consulting. And you know, one of the common themes um, that they battle with is because what they've been doing is has always been so secure. And it just made me think about how 
sometimes the systems of this world really keep us from evolving because we have, you know, guidelines and how things need to be done and we kind of stay within that box and we never really evolve. And, and then when we step over into entrepreneurship, we still kind of take that employee mindset with us, which makes it difficult to really transform and, you know, really do something amazing with our business and brand. Give me just a moment, guys. I mean, just things kind of, um, let me see what Andrea says here. My business has been saying, you know, you're pregnant with, with teaching babies. Take your body and mind away from clients and put it all on teaching babies. And, you know, I think that it's wisdom to, to gradually you know, do that thing. Sometimes God lays it in your heart to jump, but you have to get your own word from God, right? But other than that, I think it's wise to gradually move into that thing. But I do know that if you don't put more energy into the thing that you know you want to evolve into, it's going to never grow because you got to sow where you want to grow. Does that make sense to you all? You have to sow where you want to grow. There are many people I work with who... Um, they, they've reached their six-figure mark, but they are working like he was late, right? Because we can hustle our way to six figures, but it's not sustainable. And so their business, right, the soul of their business is saying, listen, I can't even sustain like this anymore. I can't even, I can't help you no more, partner, right? We have to do things differently. We have to evolve. We have to step into a new, higher version of ourselves. And that's how your business, this is how businesses stay in business for a long time. It's not that they continue to necessarily rebrand. I think just about every business goes through some type of rebranding, um, especially if you're transitioning to a completely different business and someone has known you for something else, you know, um, the entire time. But I, it's just okay to evolve. Right. It's OK to reinvent yourself. And I think it's all evolution. And I think it's one of the reasons people stay in business, you know, for, for quite some time because they evolve. It's, I've, I've been going to all of these um, smaller businesses. So I'm not um, I'm, I'm not in my home, in my town that, that I live in. Um, I've been away for probably about three weeks now, almost a month. And I've been visiting um, these restaurants, businesses that have been in business for 52 years, <clears throat> 30 years, uh, 25 years. And not a whole lot has changed about those businesses, but they stay in business. Um, however, they've been doing, they have been incorporating things like you know, Google or having social media pages. So there are some aspects of growth. I never see the owners there, never. So the business had to take on a new <clears throat> something, whether we fully saw it or not, in order for the business owner to move from being hands-on in the business all the time to step into a different role, right? And be, I believe it's because business owners step into that new next higher version of themselves that they're able to now look at the look at the business from a different <clears throat> realm right so before they're like sitting in the business so they see all the problems and you know it's difficult right I, I believe you need peace to prosper and it's difficult when you're like right in the thick of things to even imagine doing things differently but when you begin to step into a role um, of more of a visionary, you can actually see what it's going to take to sustain the business long term. Does, does that make sense to you guys? So again, my question for you all tonight to ask yourself is, or situation to imagine yourself in, is if you had to have a conversation, if your business said, hey, we need to talk, 
we've been tiptoeing around this long enough. Just like you're in a relationship with someone and you all know something is off, you probably can pinpoint it, right? But you haven't really talked about it. You've been a little angry with the person. You've been standoffish. You haven't been giving your all to it, right? You, you've been having walls and barriers and all this stuff up. So there's no real flow, right? So you both know that something is wrong, but you haven't had that conversation. And then finally, as someone says, look, we need to sit down and talk. So let's imagine that person is your business. And I want you to have an honest uh, reverse role conversation about what would your business be saying to you, right? Would your business say, you know, I don't want to do this no more. I can't stay this way anymore, right? This is not a well or machine anymore. It worked for the season that we were in before, but we need some new things going on. We need some excitement um, happening in the business. We need some new systems, some new foundations. Like you've gotten to this phase, but I don't have the capacity, this is the business talking, to take us to the next level. What is it that we're going to do, right? And I'm sure there are things within your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotion that will begin to, to have ideas, right? That you've been avoiding or resisting <clears throat> sometimes for years. Right. And the soul of your business is crying out. It's like, listen, <laughs> your business wants to grow. Your business wants to grow. That's my take on this evening, God, for those of you who are looking to step into new realms of expansion for your business. Um, our Exceptional Leaders Mastermind is open for enrollment for 2021. Right. So we start <clears throat> um, next month, I believe. But enrollment is opening is open now for those of you who would like to apply. Those of you who want to um, go deeper in the branding aspects of your business, you're like, you know, what is the soul of my business at this point? One of the things I walk my clients through is brand clarity, because I believe that who we are is talking to, to us all the time, and wanting to be expressed in how we do our business. And one of the things I find, which I think is super important in entrepreneurship is that we really focus on finding the why. So how many of you have heard, you know, many people say you need to find the why, like why are you doing this, right? But once you find the why, there's something else that's equally as important for the evolution of your business, and that's the how. It's the how. So how you're going to do it is equally important, as important, as the why in your business. And when you get to the soul of your business, when you get to really understand brand clarity and who you are, how you do it is going to be just as important as why you do it. For me, I have to have um, extreme measures of time for you. It's how I create, it's how I flow, right? And it's one of the things I teach my clients to do, create, um, products and services that allow them time, freedom, freedom. I believe we need peace to prosper, right? Free to be able to do things that allow us to cultivate our superpowers. But when we're in the pain, we can't do it, right? Because we're putting out fires all the time. We're exhausted. We're tired or we're doing nothing. We're exhausted sometimes from no action. <clears throat> but the, the mastermind allows you to create a... Um, new stream of revenue with potential of reaching six figures with that one revenue stream, six figures plus, and doing that over and over and over again from your expertise, your intellectual property, something that you're great at. It also uh, walks you through hiring. I believe that scaling your business means that you're taking on a new role and you need some help, right? When you're moving, you know, maybe your business is like, look, we need some help. I mean, you can't do it by yourself. You know, anymore, I, I walk you through hiring procedures, hiring strategies, interview strategies, how to hire the best people, how to keep a consistent flow of great people in your business. Not like every three months you're changing people, but the quality of the people that you're hiring becomes even better. And just remember, hiring is not an expense, it's a, an investment. And so the people that you're hiring onto your business you need to have their job description and what you have been doing um, 
clear enough where you know that this is going to earn you more than what you're having to pay them because you're it's an investment, right? So there should be a return, not just I'm gonna pay you to do this and you do this. That person should come in and because they're working with your company or your business, your business should be earning more money, right? You're hiring properly. So we walk through that. We walk through CEO schedule mapping. This is where I take my clients through like decluttering their schedule so that they are in a position to become more of the visionary of their space. We definitely about 25% of our training, so year-long mastermind is um, mindset. So we do um, several mindset shifts um, that are powerful to help you break the glass ceilings that you're looking at this thing, but you just can't seem to get to that next either income level or level of freedom. Um, and some of that freedom comes from you authentically being in alignment with the soul of your business. You got your business, you should be partnering with your business for growth and your business is talking to you um, all the time. It also includes an, a community of amazing, highly driven women entrepreneurs who have big goals and dreams just like you. And one of the goals that we set at the beginning of our mastermind and one of the mindset shifts that we make is to get everybody in alignment with three to five X in their business. It's never a promise that I make, but the energy is amazing. I've seen people, I don't know if you guys have seen recent videos, but people have 10 X, right? But the energy that we are in alignment with and the thought process that we have is that you three to five X your income. And so if this sounds like something that you need, um, you're at that stage in your business, your business has been talking to you and you just kind of been brushing it off. You're really ready to embrace that. You can apply at um, bit.ly slash mastermind. I'm trying to see if I can find the um, link to put up for you guys. It's right here. So it's now running um, across the the screen someone asked uh recently when do we start our first live coaching session is in december and it's an introduction and we have people from around the world i had someone from the uk in my first mastermind so it's an introduction so you guys can meet and we talk about the directives of the mastermind prior to that you get a one-to-one -one private session with me it's about 75 minutes <laughs> excuse me, it's a brand assessment. And um, we set like a 90 day strategy goal for you before the mastermind ever begins. So you actually start immediately once you are, your application is accepted. That's my take guys. What conversation would your business be having with you? That's the soul of your business speaking to you, talking to you saying, hey, we got to do something different.